when it comes to developing characters, understanding what a character spine is and how to use it in a story is very important. Uh, the information that I'm giving you is based on a book by Judith Wesson called Directing Actors, which she uses to teach the actor's craft. And I'm going to now apply that to the writing process. First thing we need to do is distinguish the difference between character de development and character spines. Character development is when you create the backstories of your characters so their traits can be revealed during the story. A character spine is a consistent character behavior that can take place in any story in which they participate. For example, Bart Simpson, uh, in every 500 plus episodes of The uh, Simpsons, he always craves negative attention. And the reason why he does that is because his sister is so perfect and since he knows that he can't compete with her in doing things good he, n he takes the easy way out and gets his attention by doing things bad and it doesn't matter what story he's in that's the way Bart is always going to behave. When uh, you think about character spines you can break it down into five different things they can be facts, events, images, themes, or paradox. Think about facts. Uh, birth order is a very important one. Um, take a family of, uh, uh, with a few kids. The oldest child uh, typically assumes some responsibility of raising uh, his or her uh, younger siblings. And that makes that character more uh, responsible, more nurturing, and they grow up a little bit quicker than the other characters. Now, that's just the fact, and the, the birth order, and then we can describe the uh, behavior from it. Let's say, because your character was the firstborn, she's a nurturer, and she wants to have a large family. Or you could say, because our character was the firstborn, she changed diapers for tw 15 years, and doesn't want to have children ever again. Birth country can be an important uh, way to describe behavior, especially when you think about the difference between Western cultures and Eastern cultures. In Western cultures, uh, the myth of the uh, rugged individualist takes place, and that's why in most of our country we have houses, we live in houses and not apartments, and we have large plots of land around our house so that we can basically do whatever what the hell we want, where in Asian cultures, the population is much denser. They uh, have to live in more with more of a sense of community and behaving in a way that puts community first. Gender is also another good determination of behaviors, especially when you use it against type. Race can be a huge factor. Take a black teenage male. He has to think about life and how he deals with the police much different than a white teenager would have to do. Economic status can be another determining factor. Someone born into a lot of money would potentially have a lot more entitlement issues than a character who did not. You can also break this down in somebody that has street smarts versus book smarts. Education, level of education, uh, expectations of that education, uh, parents' education can all play into uh, how a character behaves from story to story. And surname can even be that way. Uh, when I was in elementary school, because my name started with B, I was lined up in alphabetical order, and so I was always in the front of the class. And so I was always prepared for a teacher's question, since I was one that was uh, one of the first ones that she would make eye contact with because of my position in the classroom. Later on in middle school, it just sort of became my habit to sit in the front of the class while some, of the, while some of the weaker students would try to hide in the back. Events, things that happen to characters, are another important part of determining how characters can behave. The death of a parent or child is a major event in one's life and can change how they think about life and how they're going to participate in it. My mom was born during the Great Depression, and the behavior that resulted from that was she was unable to throw things away. 
I was not. And I, the, one of the things that gives me the greatest pleasure is to throw things away. So that created an interesting conflict and dynamic in our relationship that would be good in a story. Somebody being sexually assaulted is an event that could determine how they behave after that event. Um, in uh, CSI Special Victims Unit, Part 5, um, <clears throat> the female detective was sexually assaulted at one point in her life, and she chose the behavior of never again. And it was really interesting to see her in a uh, interrogation scene with a, with a rapist because she was the one that was always trying to uh, create physical contact and beat up the uh, assailant, and the guys were always trying to pull her off. A divorce is a uh, another... A divorce is another event that can determine your behavior, as in if you're willing to pursue another relationship or not. Images are another important way to create spines. Uh, somebody who jumps with the feet first is a good image. A cat in a room full of butterflies. I was once looking for a speaker for one of my classes, and a friend had given me this woman's number, and he said, but just because she says she's going to come doesn't mean that she will actually show up. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, well, she's kind of like a cat in a room full of butterflies. And at that point, I knew not to call her because I couldn't r rely on her to actually show up. Somebody who gets knocked down and always gets up smiling is a really good image. Um, a helicopter mom armed with hellfire missiles is a good image. Themes are an excellent way to describe how characters will behave in any kind of scene. Uh, if the person is shoot first and ask questions later. Um, somebody that's brutally honest. Uh, the filmmaker's credo, it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. The uh, reality uh, archetype of, I'm not here to make friends. And this is a very important character because they're there to create conflict in the story. Or somebody who le leaves their campground nicer than they found it. Those are all spines that can determine how somebody will behave. Paradox are excellent because it kind of shows the conflict within the character. When your greatest strength is your greatest weakness, that's an excellent um, example of a paradox spine. Uh, you could, in Kung Fu Panda, her poet was Fu. You are your own worst enemy. You know, if you're creating your own obstacles, that's a great opportunity for storytelling. A crooked cop, a gay Republican. Let's think about this. You're born in a conservative community. Um, you're, you're taught to believe uh, that the Bible says that a relationship should only be between men and women. And then at some point you determine that you are gay. How are you going to deal with that? Are you willing to give up this culture, this family? Um, are you willing to tell them this for fear of being rejected by them? Or are you going to be the kind of person that is the calls out, plays the gay card on anybody as soon as they can? And or if you hate the most, then people will suspect you to be the least. Um, there's a whole lot of behaviors that can come out of this type of uh, paradox. A thief with a code of conduct. A basset hound. Um, I had basset hounds for 25 years, and they're ridiculous looking clowns. But they, in their hearts, they think that they're lions. And so this great paradox often creates much joy in the relationship between the human and that animal. So when you're creating spines, it's really two parts. This is the hardest thing that the students um, have to understand just because it's so damn simple. First, you start by describing the spine, and then you explain the resulting behavior, right? You start with your fact, your event, your image, your theme, your paradox. And then in the second part of that sentence, you just say that this is the behavior that results from that. I was born with red hair, fact. When other kids tease me about it, I'd say something more cruel about their physical appearance. And I got good at thinking on my feet, and kids stopped teasing me, all because I was born slightly different than others. My parents divorced when I was eight years old. Um, this made father-child day at school very awkward when the school decided to assign me one of the male teachers as a surrogate father on that day. Now, I had no respect for this teacher, and now I resent anybody trying to be a male role model. Um, 
I had an older brother who was born severely handicapped, and because of that event, he died when he was five years old. I was the next child born, and because I rolled over and could walk on, walked on schedule, I could do no wrong in my mom's eyes, which resulted in my having way too much self-esteem. And so when I succeed, basically, I take it completely for granted, and when I fail, it always comes as a complete surprise. Consider family influence theory. Um, part of that is what age of the child was when there was a major event. A divorce when you're at six years old has a very different effect on a child than a divorce when they're 19 years old. What those behaviors are is for you to determine. What you're just doing is giving us reasons for understanding why your character behaves the way he or she does. There's some questions that can help you think about your character um, and as you get started developing them. What was your character like in the playground? Think about yourself. You are the same person you are were in kindergarten, right? There's parts of you that are fundamentally unchanged, and that's really what a character spine is. If you were the shy kid that didn't like hanging out in the group and tried to hide behind the tree, you're still that kid. How does your character drive on the freeway? Are they super cautious? Do they not pay attention until the very last second and miss the ramp? Or are they always planning that one next move to get that one car length ahead so they can trim that 12 seconds off their drive on the way home? Team sports versus people that excel in individual sports is a very good way to think about the differences between your characters. Um, how does your character respond to rules? Do they make them? Do they break them? Do they bend them until um, as far as they can without actually breaking them? There are some really strong characters in our world uh, that we should think about, and I'm going to give you some spines for them. In Raylan Gibbons and Justified, one of the characters described him as he'll run into a burning building to save someone after he set it on fire. And that's exactly the way Raylan be uh, behaves in every episode. Larry David in Curb Your Enthusiasm. His theme is the world will be a much better place if everyone plays by my rules. And because the world doesn't play by his rules, that creates the conflict for episode after episode in all six seasons of his uh, series. In Up, the dog Doug has multiple spines. The first is the classic dog spine of unconditional love. It doesn't matter how you mistreat Doug, he still loves you. But he's also a dog and he's easily distracted. And Squirrel is another important spine in the way that he behaves in every scene. So that's the brief rundown on character spines. Think about them as you develop your characters. They are, it's a very simple tool that you can use when you're pitching characters, that you can use when you're writing characters. And it's a great way to get started from that blank page into finally creating something that others will be reading.